I think I've always been an artist all my life. Although I was brought up in rural areas, I didn't know anything about art, whether art existed or what does it mean to be an artist, you know. I just found my passion. You know? I didn't know that I can study for it. It was later on, in the later stages, when I was at the university, when I started to study really the history of art and you know how it entails expression and, and feelings and emotions and other things. I became like much more aware of what I was doing. You know? But otherwise, I just love the beauty of it. When I look at my work, the narrative is not clear cut. I just follow my intuition. I really don't put um, the story forward as is because I really do the work for myself to understand it first. Although I don't research and reading books or anything, I take time thinking about it and putting the images in my head, seeing the picture before it's even there and try to capture that fleeting moment as quickly as I can, you know. I looked at the classical bust of um, you know, Greek uh, sculptures and then I realized that they capture the utmost aesthetic of beauty. Compared to an African uh, platform, we delve more about the emotions and also the functionality of an object. You know? And I juxtapose um, the sculptures with um, little snippets of things that I grew up with. It might be a box of matches there, it might be a lantern there. It's the things that are stuck in my head. They tell my story. Here is this sculpture of a beautiful marble. And then here is me, you know, the little lizard at the corner, which is very particular to me from my village, from what I know. It was in my house, you know, it's, it's me in there. You know, I'm trying to tell them. You might see a figure that you might recognize here and there. I, I did the president last year. It's one of those rare moments where I will ever, you know, conceive an image that's um, easily readable as a socio-political commentary. In my culture, we, we don't eat all kind of animals. We do eat certain insects and reptiles not at all. We don't eat reptiles, but they embody a particular meaning. Suppose I walk in the field, I see an empty shell of a tortoise. It tells me maybe it's a warning of something to come. So they there to serve a purpose, like uh, predict something, you know. Some say, for example, if one kills a crocodile and then um, take the brains out, they can poison the whole village with the brain. So it's a belief where I come from although it's not uh, scientifically true, but they are signs, they tell us something. The mining helmet, which uh, you'll see in my work, is uh, basically based on the manhood thing, because um, as a man, you have to prove yourself in the mine. But at the same time, the helmet tells the story of um, exploited men um, and the migrant worker, you know, being you know away from his family for a long time. But it's still for me um, an epitome of manhood, traditionally as it's seen. The goat is a sacrificial animal. In all the ceremonies that are performed traditionally, um, a goat will be slaughtered for that. And I grew up hating goat. Almost every household had a goat. And goats are the closest to, to us in many ways. You know, cattle represent wealth, but goat is like much more linked to the other world. It's like an animal used for prayer. Yeah, I think it's basically a metaphor for other known. As I grew up, uh, my worldview has changed a lot, uh, religious-wise and otherwise. You know, things have changed. I don't see the world as I used to when I was young, but I still carry the weight of all my experiences. So I see all these animals as part of me.